good to see you guys. Are you guys excited to be here? Yeah. Oh, man. I have been looking forward to this day for a long time. I love our launch, man. I love everything we do. But tonight just feels special. I just love seeing all your guys' faces and all of you that decided to come out. I'm so proud of you for being here. What a commitment. What, how awesome that is. So this is so exciting. I hope that you have had some fun coming here. And I know we're going to have some fun tonight. Um, I can't really see the... Can we cut the blue light maybe for a second? Sorry. All right. So, hey, I hope you've had a great time. Uh, there we go. That's good. <laughs> so we are jumping into, as you saw the bumper, a new series. <laughs> Excuse me, man. Tough start, huh? <laughs> jumping into a new series called Sacred Rhythms. Um, you're like, Tanner, what is a sacred rhythm? I'll explain that in a bit. But first, I believe all of us are human. Right? Yeah. All right. Just checking. All of us are human, and I believe something true with the human nature is that we actually have rhythms in our life. All of us have some sort of rhythm, right? And I'm not talking dance moves. Some of y'all, you know, I love y'all, though. I love you. A lot of us have rhythms, maybe some funny rhythms or maybe some good rhythms, maybe some bad rhythms, things that we are consistently doing over and over again. I don't know. I don't know about you, but maybe for me, you know, here's a funny one, a rhythm in my life. Since I was a little kid, I mean, like, real little. How many, do you guys still like to go to the movie theater ever? Yeah? Okay, good. Ever since I was a little kid, I have to, I don't care where I'm at, what movie theater, what state I'm in, no matter what, a rhythm I have in my life is that every time I go to a movie theater, I have to get a Coke slushy mixed with cherry and a large popcorn, no butter, extra salt, souvenir cup. That's me. I've spent so much money on souvenir cups. I have to do it. One time in California, I went out to a movie theater, and they, whatever, I don't know what they're doing out there. They were like, hey, we don't serve slushies here. What are you talking about? I left. I went to the gas station. And I came back. I said, I got one. Don't worry about it. For real, a good rhythm I have in my life, that's a funny one. A good one is I like to brush my teeth. You know, I think that's pretty consistent, right? You say that's a good rhythm to have. I do that. But a bad rhythm I have, ooh, I don't know what it is. I can't even believe I'm telling you this. I don't know if you relate to me in any extent, but sometimes when I do laundry and then I put them in the dryer, I just leave them there. I mean, I'm just like, ah, they're clean. I'll go get them tomorrow. I leave them there. Or sometimes if I have trash in my car, sometimes I'm just like, man, then I got to grab it. I got to go. So, you know, I actually have like a little trash bag in my car now, trying to, you know, get out of that one. So that's something that I do that. It probably isn't so good. It's just not useful for me. But I got funny rhythms, good rhythms, bad rhythms. I don't know. Maybe you relate. But I do believe that in everyone's life, we probably need something called a sacred rhythm. Rhythms that are set apart. Rhythms that are special. That is why we're diving into a new series called Sacred Rhythms. A sacred rhythm. Is a rhythm that you have in your life, maybe a habit, a routine, that is in pursuit of Jesus. Moments, no matter what is going on, we say, this is a rhythm in my life, and I'm going to commit to it. And in this series, we want to challenge your rhythms for the next couple of weeks. We want to take a dive into some sacred rhythms, some rhythms where we just lay ourselves down before God, so that he, by his power and grace, may change us from the inside out. These are habits that we actually intentionally do to form this thing called spiritual formation where we actually grow with Jesus. These rhythms aren't the goal in itself. Jesus is the goal. But through these habits in our life, when we lay ourselves down, he meets in this place that is so cool. And I believe this series is going to be really, really fruitful, really life-giving. And the purpose of this, the purpose of these spiritual disciplines, these rhythms, is the total transformation of the person. The aim is to replace old destructive habits of thought and action with maybe new life-giving actions and thoughts. And the rhythm, rhythm that we're going to actually jump into tonight, you've probably heard of it before, but I hope you have a new light on it after tonight. The rhythm is TOG. If you don't know what TOG is, you know what's TOG. It's just simply time alone with God. It's an acronym or Bible reading, opening up the word and getting involved, making a rhythm and a habit in our life that says, I want to consistently hear what God has to say to me, because it will change your life. Intentionally opening the Bible and allowing his word to sink deep in our hearts. And I want to dive into a passage tonight, but before I do, I want to give context into what the passage is explaining, what is actually happening. 
And if you have your Bibles, I want to um, invite you to actually open up to Exodus chapter 20. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the front half of the Bible. Exodus chapter 20. What is happening here is that the Lord tells Moses that he is going to appear on top of Mount Sinai and he wants his people to be there. God is saying, I want my people to be there when I arrive. I actually want to speak to my people. And he says, and Moses, when I arrive, I'm not just going to, oh, hey, there's God. I want to make a grand entrance where my power is displayed, where my people see how loving and compassionate I am, where my power is displayed. There's actually thunder. There's lightning on top of this mountain. And God is saying, hey, I'm going to appear here in three days. Get ready. And when the trumpet from heaven sounds, Moses, lead my loving people. Take them to the mountain because I want to have a relationship with them. I want them to actually hear me speak. And the Israelites are like, yeah, let's do that. That sounds like a great idea. Can you imagine the scene here? God appearing on top of a mountain and just thunder and lightning. He tells Moses to take the Israelites, go to the edge of the mountain so that he can speak directly to them, not through anyone else, but God personally. And so the trumpet sounds and the Israelites, and they arrive to the mountain and there was thunder and lightning. But as I read the text, the people of God ha actually had an interesting response to this. An interesting response to God's invitation. And I want to read it to you. It's Exodus chapter 20, verses 18 through 21. It says, When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance. Now, I want us to notice something in here. I actually just want us to focus on five words tonight. And these words are, they stayed at a distance. You see, the Israelites... They were choosing intentionally to stand far off from God. That they saw God and said, no, I think I'm going to stand actually at a distance. God is saying, I want to speak to my people. I want to be close to them. But they choose to stay at a distance instead. This word distance struck me. And tonight I want to talk to anyone in the room, anyone here, that simply feels distant from God. That there is just a gap between you and him, and it feels like your heart may be struggling to be close to his. Or maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus, and you're like, maybe I am distant. I believe one of the main reasons that we may feel distant from God is actually found in what the Israelites say. They choose to stay distant, and then they have a response in verse 18. The Israelites said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, Moses, and we will listen. But Moses, do not have God speak to us or we will die. They say, Moses, would you go up the mountain? Let God speak to you, but make sure he does not speak to me directly. Moses, if you just go up there, you come back down, we'll listen. That's not a problem. We'll listen. We just don't want to hear from him directly. Moses, go up there, meet with God and tell us all about him. Tell us what he said. Tell, it what it, tell us what it was like. What was it like, Moses, being in the presence of God? Inspire us, Moses. You see, the Israelites, in this moment, desired a Moses more than they desired a relationship with God. You see, maybe for us, Maybe we simply just desire a good pastor. Maybe we desire just someone to inspire us or a great communicator more than we desire a relationship with a perfect, loving God. Maybe we desire a great sermon here at Impact more than we desire our personal time in the Bible. Maybe we feel distant from God because we've gotten comfortable only hearing from someone else on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning rather than hearing directly from God in our alone time with him. What if we feel distant from God because we haven't been to the top of the mountain in his word for so long? Funny story um, about me, actually, I did, probably a lot of you actually don't know this, when I turned 18, I had an amazing opportunity to be a security guard, <laughs> straight up, 
had a vest and everything, dude. Security. No joke. Not just any security job. Country Thunder. Ever heard of it? Well, you should. Look it up. Country Thunder. Twin Lakes, Wisconsin. I have no idea what's involved, but my brother somehow, if you know anything about my brother, somehow he landed the head backstage agent at Country Thunder where he is on the stage. I'm talking Thomas Rhett. I'm talking Jason Aldean. I actually have Thomas Rhett's guitar pick. Fun fact, I don't really like country music. You know that from last year. Sorry. But I, 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 but I'm like, yeah, for sure. I'll go be, I'll go be a security guard. And so there's 50,000 people at this country festival for five straight days. I'm working 13 hours a night. People are going crazy. I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. This one dude jumped off the top of his RV, and then I watched the porta potty blow up. All for Jason Aldean. I kid you not, saw it, it was on fire. Anyways, that's another story. So I'm backstage. Anyone know Billy Currington? You know, I'm backstage. Here's Mr. Billy Currington. I know he's a big deal, and it's pouring rain. Pouring rain. I'm like, dude, this is wild. And so he actually, before a set, comes up to me. Kid you not? And he goes, hey, there's not enough people in the front section, in the, in the, like, the bowl section, you know, where, like, you're up close and personal. He's like, there's not enough people because of rain. Hey, Tanner, can you go out to the, the lawn seats way out there where there's only screens and speakers? Actually, tell them it's free. Come up to the bowl. I don't want to perform in front of no one. That's what he said. I'm like, absolutely, Mr. Currington. You got it. I don't even know who you are, dude, but I'm there. So I book out to the lawn. I'm like, there's 50,000 people. I'm like, get out of the way. Anyways, I get there, and I go up to this group of people, and there's probably about four of them, and I said, hey, so sorry to interrupt your experience. Would you want to go to the bowl, like, for free? Like, it's totally paid for, and I'm thinking, like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm the man. They look at me and say, no. What are you talking about? I'm like, dude, like, free, free golf. They say, no, no, me and my friends just want to hang out here and watch the screens. Dude, how much did you pay to be here? So they're like, no, and so I, now i got to go tell Mr. Currington, hey, they don't like you. That's a problem. So anyways, and I'm like, dude, what do you mean you don't want to be here? Like, what do you mean? You do? They're like, we just want to watch it through the screen. It's okay. It's, uh, we just, I'm like, okay, whatever. So then, you know, it's fine. And I go back, and I'm like, man, they missed a great opportunity to see Billy Currington up close and personal. Like, whatever. I don't you know. So I was like, hey, you're lost, I guess. But I walked away from that, and as I'm, as I'm sitting there just, Thinking about the Israelites, I, as silly as this is, guys, is this almost not exactly what we do? We settle for distance? We settle for words through a secondary source instead of meeting and hearing with the living God? Maybe through a screen? Maybe through a speaker? And we say, no, it's good enough. I'll hear what, what comes through that. How much better would it have been for them if they just took the free gift and went up close and personal and heard from him directly? Maybe sometimes we say, God, why do I feel so distant from you? But maybe the only time we hear the word of God is on a Wednesday night from someone else. Or the only time we pray is when someone is leading us in prayer. Or maybe the only time we worship is maybe through the voice of someone else. God wants to fill the gap in your life. By his grace, he says, I want to be near to you, my people, my children. Would you accept the gift? Would you draw near to me? Can I be honest with you tonight that, guys, in today's world, in your schools, in your generation, I with all the temptation, right? With all the, just the craziness. Guys, I know what happens in your life at schools. I get it. I was your age. This stuff still happens. And the craziness and the chaos and the social media age, guys, I can't, I don't know how one could pull off following God without any alone time with him. I don't know how. I don't know how. Don't get me wrong, guys. This is great. This is, this is what we need to do this. Hearing from someone else is awesome. We're supposed to be in church, but hear me tonight that there is actually something so, so different, so powerful when you get into the word for yourself. 
My personal fight against the evil powers of this world come through the power of God and using his word as my shield, not the words of man. It is through his word that I can hear God speak directly to me, not just because it's there, but because he wants to. And he laid it out for us. Moses goes on to explain to the Israelites in verse 20 the benefit of connecting and being in relationship with God. Moses expresses, hey, there's a great invitation coming your way to be with the living God personally. And it says they, they stayed at a distance. But then Moses says, hey, and I don't know if you understand this. In verse 20, he says, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God, here it is, God will be with you to keep you from sinning. And I love what Moses says. I see two things in this. The first one is he said, God will be with you. Moses says, guys, listen. He's coming. He wants to be near. God says, I want my people there. I will be with you. And I'm here to tell you that when we draw near to God, he is so near. Some of you said, God is not near. And I, hear, I am here to tell you, he is ready. In this, this is both an invitation and a promise. How beautiful. James 4, 8, come near to God and he will come near to you. I believe, guys, that when a soul sets out to meet with God, God has set out to meet that soul with loving compassion. Do you believe it? Because I don't just believe it. I've seen it. I've felt it. And the second thing is this, if you're taking notes, God will keep you. He will keep you. I love this. That Moses is expressing here that in this relationship with God, through his power and his grace, through spending time with him, spending alone time with God will keep you from a lifestyle that is destructive. Getting to God's word will keep you from living a lifestyle that leads to dissatisfaction, lack of peace, and a sinful habit, a sinful rhythm. I know, guys, I know there are people here tonight that are dissatisfied. They don't have peace. They don't have joy. And they're living a life that maybe they're not proud of. And that's okay. Because God says, I have more for you if that's you tonight. He says, do not be afraid. God's word is so vast and rich and deep and beautiful. And it cuts. It feels so, it says, God, you know me. How did you know that? I love that. After Moses expresses these truths to the distant Israelites, the story then goes on to say that, that Moses approached the mountain where God was. He gives encouragement. They stay at a distance, and Moses says, I'm going up. In verse 21, it says, Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Now, this is, this part of the story to me is, is very interesting. It says that Moses was approaching what? Thick Why would there be darkness? God is a God of great light, casting out the darkness. James 1 says he's the father of heavenly lights. So bright and so majestic and so beautiful and wonderful. Why is Moses entering darkness? That doesn't make sense. So Moses ventured up the mountain, deciding to throw himself into the thick darkness so that the ones at the bottom of the mountain could be in relationship with God, so that he could hear for the sake of his people. Although God's chosen people decided to reject the invitation, Moses then went into a great darkness for the sake of the Israelites. Don't miss this. In the same way, when Christ was crucified, he entered into a physical and spiritual darkness for the sake of you and I. Luke 23, 44 tells us that when Jesus was crucified to bear and take the weight of our sin, he became sin, that a great darkness then covered the land serious darkness happening here at the cross. The God of heavenly lights had to pour out the darkness of sin and death onto his son so that we may experience the light of Jesus. That's 
the good news. Even if you have rejected the invitation, you say, Tanner, I am so distant from God. Even if you decide to stay distant, he awaits with open arms, with love in his heart, and the invitation says, I love you with all that I have, enough that I would send my son with hands pierced with nails to take on total and complete darkness so that you may go live your life. That is new life found in Christ Jesus. The invitation is there. And the saddest part about this story is also found in verse 21. Before this, it says this, the people remained at a distance while Moses approached. First they stayed the story goes on that they chose to remain at a distance. I ask you a simple question tonight. Wherever you are spiritually, will you too remain at a distance? Jesus, thank you for tonight. Thank you for just your loving invitation. God, I pray that your word would stick in our hearts. God, that we would draw near to you through, the, through your son, Jesus. Thank you that we get to draw near because of your sacrifice on the cross. Jesus, I pray that you just fill the hearts with peace and joy. God, that your word would continue to speak to us, change us, and that we would just feel your presence in a way that maybe we've never felt before. God, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.